بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ أَنْ طَهِّرَا بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالرُّكَّعِ السُّجُودِ وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ اجْعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُّهُ إِلَى عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا امه مسلمه لك وارنا مناسكنا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم رَبَّنَا وَابْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدِ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ صدق اللہ العظیم ٹوڈے وی ار اسٹارٹنگ فرام آیا 124 آف سورۃ البقرہ آیا نمبر 124 ان دی پریویس آیاز اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ the test Bani Israel or Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam went through. Different type of hardships, difficulties in life, struggle, ibadah, and then showing the proper behavior, akhlaq, morality in all different situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then accepted the efforts of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and asked him to build a house in Makkah Mukarramah which is known as Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that place وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا Remember when we made the house referring to Kaaba a frequented place for people in a place of peace. Mathabatan lin nas. A place where people would always go back. Thabayathubu means to return. Thawab is what you get in return for a good deed. Mathaba, a place of returning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We made that house a place of returning. Which means, it is the place that whoever visits the place once, never feels that I'm satisfied and got everything I wanted. People would like to go again and again. In fact, after going once, it looks like 
the thirst of going back increases and the person feels I'm missing the place. Is not a place that a person would go and enjoy some sceneries, is not a construction that we could say is very unique and we cannot see those type of constructions, those type of designs anywhere else or those type of gardens and fountains anywhere else. It all shows that it's nothing but the barakah of the place, the mercy and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that showers in that place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ We made this place, this house, a frequented place, a place of returning. Another explanation some of the Mufassireen have given of this word, of place of returning is that regardless of where people would be in the world, they would turn to Kaaba. So if people are in the east, they would be turning towards west. The people of the west will turn towards east. People of north will turn towards south. Kaaba would be towards south for them. And for south, people of south will turn towards north. So all people turn to that place. So it's a place of turning for people. وَأَمْنَ And it's a place of peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that place such that there is always peace over there. And that peace is through the rahmah of Allah. It's not because of the power, is not because of weapons, is not because of any other physical strength, is because of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a clear sign that it's a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering His rahmah and mercy is there. Therefore, anyone that goes over there feels in peace and stays in peace. And then, Sharia also applied certain rules that will keep peace over there. For example, according to the rules of Sharia, hunting is not allowed in Makkah. Which simply means, if you see a deer, you see a rabbit, you see any animal that in normal occasion, you would try to get the animal, you would hunt that animal, or if it is too close to you, you would catch it, you would pick it up in Makkah Mukarramah, that animal could be sitting anywhere. No one is allowed to harm or hurt the animal or even scare it. It's not allowed. It's the place of aman, the place of peace. People are in ihram. And for entering Makkah, you have to have ihram. Now people, when people are in ihram, there is a mosquito flying around, flying, uh, flying around you. The mosquitoes are biting you. We are not allowed to kill them. We are in ihram. You are supposed to be in peace. Others should be in peace with you also. Even killing mosquitoes, killing small insects is not allowed in that situation. So, وَأَمْنَا It's a place of peace. وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we ordered people that make from the station of Ibrahim a.s. a place of prayer. Maqam, the place of standing. Qama yaqumu is to stand. Maqam is the place where anyone would stand. So we said the place of standing of Ibrahim salam make it a place of prayer for yourself. What is Maqam Ibrahim? Maqam Ibrahim is the name of a stone that everyone knows it nowadays as Maqam Ibrahim also. It's a stone that has the footprints of Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam. There are two miracles about that stone. One is that generally when you stand on a stone on a rock, you won't get a footprint on it. But it's a miracle of Ibrahim والسلام, that this rock got the footprints of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام. Number two, this rock was the rock and the stone where Ibrahim والسلام, at the time of constructing the Kaaba would stand on it. And the rock would move up and down, back and forward according to the will of Ibrahim so it will not be just moving according to some buttons or instructions that he would have to give. It was just Ibrahim a.s. wants it up, it will go up. He wants it down, it would go down. He wants it forward, it would go forward. He wants it to go back, it will go back. وَأَمْنَا وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى That's Maqam Ibrahim. 
when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam went for Hajj and he performed Tawaf, they were passing by Maqam Ibrahim, that is stone that has the footprints of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, is this is Maqam Ibrahim? He said, yes. This is the place where he stood at the time of constructing the Kaaba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, yes. So Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu anhu said, then, أَفَلَا نَتَّخِذُهُ مُصَلًّا Why shouldn't we pray over here? The two rak'ah of tawaf that we are supposed to perform after tawaf, we should pray it over here. As soon as Ibrahim, Umar radiallahu anhu said this, Umar radiallahu anhu says, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked few steps, then he stopped. And then he turned towards Umar radiallahu anhu and he said, just now the ayah is revealed to me, confirming what you have said. And this is the ayah, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And make the place of standing of Ibrahim, the station of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, as the place of prayer. Umar radiallahu anhu, in many situations, he would suggest something, and the ayah would reveal exactly according to how Umar radiallahu anhu wanted it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, there were people in the previous nations who were known as mulhamun. Mulham is driven from the word ilham. Ilham means that Allah puts some message in person's heart. It's not a wahi. If it comes to a prophet of Allah, it comes in the form of wahi, which is much more stronger form. But this is called ilham, which means a feeling comes in the heart of a person. He doesn't hear any words. He doesn't hear anyone talking to him. A feeling comes in the heart of this person. When the person is very truthful, sadiq and suddiq, when the person is God-fearing, when the person is the person of taqwa, refraining from sins, always in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that ilham is always from Rabbul Alameen. Shaitan cannot put any effect into that ilham. Shaitan cannot mess it up. And therefore their ilham is pure. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the previous nations, there were people known as mulhamun. They were mulham. They would get the right feeling of what things, how things are supposed to be. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِن يَكُنْ فِي أُمَّتِي فَإِنَّهُ عُمَرُ The person in my ummah who is mulham is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, as his own son Abdullah ibn Umar narrates about him, that whenever people said about anything, that we think it should be like this, and Umar gave his opinion saying, I think it should be like this, Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always confirmed what Umar wanted. There are 21 places quoted in the hadith, 21 different situations that are quoted in the hadith that Umar would say something and the ayah would reveal exactly the way Umar said it. This is the 21 is only counting those situations where the ayahs would reveal according to how Umar radiallahu anhu would say it. Other than that, of course, there are so many hadiths in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would confirm the words of Umar radiallahu anhu. We are not counting those. We are counting just the ayahs of Al-Quran that were revealed as per the instructions and the opinion of Umar radiallahu anhu. These are called muwafaqat of Umar radiallahu anhu. Muwafaqat Umar radiallahu anhu. And this is one of those ayahs. When we think about it, really this is a situation where it's difficult for a person to even think, why a per- how could he think that we should pray at Maqam Ibrahim? A person like us would think, okay, how about in front of Hajar Aswad, the black stone, by the door of the Kaaba, inside the Hatim, inside the Kaaba. But why at Maqam Ibrahim? Subhanallah, it all shows 
just how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Umar radiallahu anhu with the right understanding of how Allah wants things to happen. So Umar radiallahu anhu said it, and then this ayah was revealed, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We ordered Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as salatu was salam. أَن تَهْهِرَا بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ Purify my house for those who would make tawaf. للطائفين والعاكفين. Number two for those who would stay in اعتكاف. Number three والركع السجود and for those who would do ruku and sujood. Of course ruku and sujood are part of one ibadah which we know call it salah. So in other words we can say three ibadahs are mentioned over here. Tawaf, اعتكاف and salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Sayyidina Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as salatu was salam that purify my house for people who would want to do these ibadat. We will come to the ibadat later. Let's understand tahira baytiya. Purify my house. The house is just built. There are no idols around it. There is no dirt around it. What does tahira mean? Purify my house. Purify my house. It has few meanings here. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them that as you build my house, make sure keep everything pure and clean in construction and in intention. Because they are just building it. If the construction, the material used, the wealth used, the money used, the effort is being put in the construction and the money that is being used for it at the same time the intention of constructing if all of this is pure and clean this place will stay pure and clean but if at the time of building the material is not clean and pure the time is being put is cheated from work from other things and the person is putting his time in there or the intention is not clean and pure any of these things is not clean, the house is not clean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed them from the time of building the house, from the time of building the Kaaba, keep it pure. Don't bring any dirt. Any dirt in your intention will bring dirt into the place. Any dirt in the construction will make the place dirty and it won't be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, keep it pure and clean after you build it. Guard this house. Don't allow anyone to bring anything of shirk and kufr around this house. This is also keeping it pure. And number three, of course, the physical cleanliness of the place that keep it clean so that people who would like to perform ibadah in this house, they won't see dirt and they won't be turned away by the dirt of the place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu salam to keep it pure and clean. And the same instruction continues for all of us till the day of Qiyamah. Tahira bayti. Keep my house pure and clean. Build it with pure intention. With pure money and wealth. And everything keep it clean and pure. Keep it clean and pure from all the shirk and kufr. Anything against the deen of Allah. Keep the house of Allah clean and pure from those things. At the same time, keep it clean also so people who want to do the ibadah, they feel like doing the ibadah in the place. Tahira bayti. And there are many ayahs in Quran and a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that talk about this very important order of keeping the house of Allah always pure and clean. There was a woman in Medina Munawwara. She migrated to Medina. She was all by, him, by herself. Accepted Islam, a very old poor lady. So she used to live somewhere outside of the masjid. She put her tent and every day she would come and clean the masjid. Every day she would come and clean the masjid. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went to the masjid, he didn't see her there. He didn't see her cleaning. 
So he asked the Sahaba, what happened, where is she? He said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away last night. And we buried her. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, he had given the Sahaba the instruction that we should not delay the burial. And therefore, if a person would die during the night time, they used to bury the person right away, but they would not call the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they don't want to disturb him. For this lady, when he was told that we have buried her, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dulluni ala qabriha. Show me where is her qabr. He took the Sahaba with him. They went to the grave of this lady. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them to line up and he performed salatul janazah over there on her. And then he said, "In هَذِهِ الْقُبُورَ مَمْلُوءَةٌ ظُلْمَةٌ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا These graves are full of darkness. They are very dark. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُنَوِّرُهَا عَلَيْهِمْ بِصَلَاتِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah puts nur into the qabr by me doing the salah on them. He's telling us that you don't do it. It's not for you, but I'm doing this especially because through my prayer, they get nur in the qabr. Sahaba already made the janazah. But he wanted to do it because it was some special gift, of course. A prophet is making shafa'ah for, for, for a person of his ummah through the salat al-janazah. But he specially did it for that lady. He didn't do it for some other people. But he did it for her to show people the importance of the act that she was doing. The importance of the ibadah that she was performing that was cleaning the masjid, cleaning the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tamim al-Dari radiyallahu anhu who was Christian, became Muslim. And then he was the first Sahabi, first person who kindled a light in the masjid. When Prophet ﷺ went into the masjid night time, after Maghrib, he saw light in the masjid. He asked, who did it? They said, it's Tamim al-Dari. Prophet ﷺ made dua for him, that Allah, may Allah give him light, the way he put light for us in the masjid. This is the masajid. This is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. And ordered Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam first. And from there the order continues to us also. أَن تَهِّرَا بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكْعِ السُّجُودِ Keep my, my house clean and pure. And for those, then he mentioned three ibadat. Number one, ta'ifin. Those who would perform tawaf. Number two, two aqifin, those who would do atikaf, and number three, for those who would do ruku' and sujood. Generally, the purpose of masjid is salah. The main purpose of masjid is salah. And that is the most important purpose of a masjid. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the ayah with ta'ifin, those who do tawaf. From this, scholars have driven this rule that in every masjid, the most important ibadah is salah, but in Makkah Mukarramah, the most important ibadah is tawaf. This is why Allah started with tawaf. Because the most important thing, part of the masjid in Makkah is Kaaba. So of course, if Kaaba is the most important part, then tawaf would be the most important ibadah, which is which can be performed only in Makkah Mukarramah. That ibadah cannot be performed anywhere else. So in Makkah Mukarramah, in the Haram of Makkah, the most important ibadah is tawaf. Anywhere else, the most important ibadah is salah. And therefore, the requirement is, when a person enters the masjid, it is mustahab, it is desirable, just as we meet each other, we say, Assalamu alaikum, when we enter the masjid, we perform two rakah salah, which is called tahiyyatul masjid, Assalamu alaikum to the masjid. In Makkah Mukarramah, when a person enters the uh, haram, it's required or it's desirable, rather than salah, a person should do a tawaf of tahiyyatul tawaf. That would be the tawaf, considered tawaf, tawaf al tahiyyah instead of tahiyyatul masjid. That, because that is the most important ibadah there. The second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here is aqifin. Keep my house pure and clean for those who want to do a'tikaf. Which means this is also another very important ibadah of the masajid that generally is neglected. A'tikaf in the masajid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore asked Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam that when you are building my house, make sure that you keep place. And you keep the house clean for those who would like to stay in this place and who would like to do atikaf in this place. What rukkai sujood? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wanted to mention salah, did not just say salah, mentioned ruku' and sujood. There is no mention of qiyam. Why qiyam is not mentioned? Because ruku' and sujood will come only after qiyam. So when you say, you do ruku', if a person is sitting down, he won't be doing ruku', he's already down. You're doing ruku' from qiyam, from standing up. This is why after ruku', we don't go straight down into sujood, we stand up and then we go into the sujood. So ruku' and sujood are referring to salah. But the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned ruku' and sujood to tell us that that is the most important part of the salah. Ruku' and sujood. The most important part of salah is ruku' and sujood. Why? Because salah is all about humbling ourselves. In ruku' you prostrate before Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you go only halfway. Then you stand up and you say it wasn't enough for me. I just went halfway for my, my Rabb. No, no, that's not enough. I'm going to go all the way. So you go all the way into the sujood. And you get up from the sujood and you say, I did it halfway before. No, I'm going to do it all the way once more. So you do another sajda. So you do one ruku' and two sujood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The person, when he is in the state of sujood, that is the position when he is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closest position of a human being with his Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala is when the person is in sujood. Out of all positions, out of all situations, regardless of what situation that may be, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sujood is the time when you are closest to your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the first surah that was revealed, first ayahs were revealed of Surah Al-Ala, end of the uh, surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasjud waqtarib. Do a sajda and draw near to me. And do another sajda and get even closer. And do another sajda and get even closer. Wasjud, waqtarib. Do a sajda and come close. Do another sajda, come closer. And every sajda, a person is drawing nearer to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this we can imagine that when in, in the month of Ramadan, we perform Salat al-Taraweeh, 20 rak'ahs of Taraweeh. Even if we don't count the Fard and Witr and Sunnah and Nawafil, just in those 20 rak'ahs, we are doing 40 sujood. You are 40 steps ahead every night than what you were before. This is 40 steps getting closer to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because wasjud waqtarib. Do a sajda and draw nearer to me. وَالرُّكْعِ sujood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam that keep my house pure and clean for those who want to do tawaf, i'tikaf, and they want to do ruku' and sujood. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember, when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam said, and he made this dua, رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا O oh my Lord, make this place a city of peace. اِجْعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا Make this place a city of peace. وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And provide its people with fruits. Those out of them who believe in Allah and the last day. This was the dua of Ibrahim a.s. He has two things. Number one, to make that place a city of peace. Number two, the second dua was that وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Provide the people of this town with all kind of fruit. But then he put a restriction. مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Provide those who believe in Allah and the last day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam but did not accept the condition. قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I would provide even for the disbelievers. But for them, فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا for the ones who disbelieve, I shall let them enjoy a little. ثُمَّ ila عَذَابِ النَّارِ Then I shall force them 
to the punishment of fire, المصير, it is truly an evil place of return. Very important dua of Ibrahim والسلام. First dua that Ibrahim السلام, made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbij al hadha baladan amina. This similar type of dua is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim. But there is a little difference in wording over there. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, dua, his dua was, Rabbij al hadha baladan amina. Baladan is common noun. But in Surah Ibrahim, the dua says, Rabbij al hadha balada amina, with alif and lam. Specific. Why hadha baladan? And over there is هذا البلد. Mufassirin said, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam made this dua two times. One is before constructing the Kaaba. Or at the time of constructing the Kaaba. At that time it was just an, a land over there. No residence in Makkah Mukarramah. No one was residing over there. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is making the dua, Rabbi jal hadha, Ya Allah make this, which means this area, this place, a city of peace. So make what? Make this place. He's making dua for the place to become a city, number one, and number two, a city where there would be peace. It's not a city yet. So he's asking Allah to make it a city. But, the dua that's in Surah Ibrahim, when Ibrahim السلام, came later on, Ibrahim Ismail السلام, had grown up and he was living there. Banu Jurhum, there was a name, this name of a clan that came and lived over there in Makkah Mukarramah. As they saw Ibrahim, and, uh, as they saw Ismail السلام, residing over there, so they were traveling, they saw the water in there, they saw the fountain of water which is Zamzam, so they stayed over there, they stationed over there. And accordingly, as people moved over there, it became a city. So now when Ibrahim السلام, visited his son Ismail السلام, there are a lot of people living in the town now. So he makes dua, Rabbi jal hadha al-balada amina. It's already town. Ya Allah, make this town a place of peace. Over there, make this place, this place a town of peace. So make it a town and make it a place, town of peace. Over there the dua is, is already town. So make this town a place of peace. وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ And provide the residents of this place with all kind of fruit. Thamarat doesn't necessarily refer to the fruit that we take from the tree only. As normally in our normal language also, we use the word, the fruit. This is the fruit of my hard work. You don't refer to this a fruit from a tree only. This is the fruit of my hard work, which means you could say result. This is the result of my effort. This is the result of my hard work. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he made this dua, his dua is, Ya Allah provide the people of this town with fruits, with all kind of fruits, which means give them all kind of things in this part of the world. Makkah Mukarramah, if you look at the position of Makkah, the situation of Makkah, at that time, this dua was something that was out of people's mind. No one could even think about it. In our language, you are asking for something impossible. But the one who is asking is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, a prophet of Allah. He knows what he's asking. And he knows who he's asking from. Rabbul Alameen, where the word impossible does not exist. So he made that dua. Makkah Mukarramah, you don't even have water. You don't have a tree. I mean, just to grow one tree over there, you may have to put efforts of your life over there. And then if you get one tree, you are successful. And he's saying, Ya Allah, bring all kind of fruit over here. And subhanAllah, see how the dua of Ibrahim salam is accepted. People go now to Makkah to shop for shopping. Subhanallah, there is so much over there that our intentions are ruined already. People go over there, I'm going for Hajj, but keeping all the chunk of money 
and having list of things that he wants to buy and then having so many list of gifts that he has to bring and even every relative all the relatives are expecting gifts gifts from you when you come back from Mecca oh you went to Mecca you didn't bring no gifts I brought water and zamzam and dates oh what I'm gonna do with this you didn't bring me no watch no jewelry subhanallah fruits from all around the world things from all around the world are going over there let's understand the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam now Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam built the Kaaba and he wanted this place Masjid al-Haram to be always occupied in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever builds a place of ibadah anyone who gives sadaqah jariya for example someone donates hundred thousand dollars as a sadaqah jariya he likes because we give a big amount now so i want this hundred thousand dollars i want this fifty thousand dollars i want this masjid that i will have worked so hard for to be always being used for the ibadah of allah so that when i leave the world i keep on getting the reward for it ibrahim salam wants to make sure this house of allah will always be used for the ibadah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people are occupied with this house they are always busy with this house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but for that if you look at the situation of mecca you are building the house of Allah, that Kaaba, that Masjid, that a place where the residents of this place will always have to go out of town to bring the necessities of life. Nothing grows over here. Even for having animals, you need to buy a goat, go far distance, go all the way, travel 100 miles, and then you might find some farmers over there and bring some goats and sheep from them. You want clothing, you may have to go even further. And you want some other needs of life, people used to travel all the way to Syria or to Yemen. Rihlat al shitai was saif. They used to travel to Syria and Yemen to get just the necessities of life from those places. Now if people of Mecca, if they would have to always travel out for the needs and necessities of life, then who would do the ibadah? Who would stay here to take care of the haram? Who would call Adhan? Who would need the Salah? We need people to stay here. So he's making dua. Ya Allah, bring the needs of people who over here, bring the things that would fulfill the needs over here. So that they won't have to go, things will come to them. And as they keep on receiving these things over here, they won't have to think of leaving Makkah and going away for the necessities of life. Therefore, they will stick here, they will stay here, and they will always be tawaf and ibadah. The house will stay clean because they will keep the house clean. Their needs are being fulfilled over here. So it's not that, okay, what can I do? The people who are cleaning, they're saying they're out on holidays for three months, and therefore no one is there to clean the house. The imams are out because no one is, because they had to go for a business trip. The muazzin is not there because he's out of town for his needs. All the needs are coming over there. All the things are coming over there. Needs are being fulfilled. So, Ibrahim salam's main purpose of the dua was this, that people over here, people of Mecca, they won't have to go out for their needs. Everything should come to them. So this house is always taken care of properly. And therefore, then he put this condition. Now we can understand the purpose of this condition. Man amana minhum billahi wal yawmil akhir. Some people think Ibrahim alayhi salam said this because he didn't like kuffar. It's not that. It's because who would be the caretaker of the haram, of the Kaaba? It should be people of iman. People who believe in Anbiya alayhi salatu salam. So those who believe in Allah in the last day. And as far as the kuffar, they don't have to do anything with this house. So they can travel. So therefore, he said, Ya Allah, my dua is for those who will be the caretakers of this Kaaba, and those are the people of Iman. So Ya Allah, provide the people of Iman with all kind of things over here, so they won't have to go out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, through them, I will provide even for the kuffar. The dua is accepted. But I will provide the kuffar also. Although, they won't have to do anything for my house, but for me, I don't distinguish between people in this way, in this world. In this world, 
I give the kuffar and believers all the same thing. And here also we can see the difference between a human being and Rabbul Alameen. Regardless of how great the human being is. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Mufassireen have said that the greatest of Allah's creature is Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that is Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and then Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam being in that position, yet he's asking, he's trying to put a condition and Allah says, no, no, not according to this dunya. I'm not going to put any condition. Difference between makhluq and khalq. Between human being and Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, woman kafar. The rule in this life is my namaz are for everyone here. But, فَأُمَتِّعُهُ qalila. I will let him enjoy for some time. What does some time mean? This whole life. Qalilan refers to this whole life. I will give them what they want throughout their life. But it is really qalil, very little comparing to akhirah. It's nothing comparing to akhirah. فَأُمَتِّعُهُ qalila. I will let them enjoy for a little time. ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ Then I will force them اِضْطِرَار فَمَنِ اِضْطِرَّ A person who is forced to something. ثُمَّ أَضْطَرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ I will force them to the punishment of fire. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And it is truly an evil place of return. صَارَ يَصِيرُ To go somewhere. مَصِيرِ The place of return. That's the worst place to go back to. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ Scholars from this also have driven a rule. And that is that the caretaker of the masjid, there should be someone who would be the caretaker of the masjid. And that person's salary should be paid by others so that that person does not have to work and do anything else. So he would take care of all of the needs of the masjid. From the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ Remember, when Ibrahim was raising up the foundation of the house, and Ismail was doing it too. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And they were making this dua, O our Lord, accept this from us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Surely you are all hearing, all knowing. رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ O oh, our Lord, make us both submissive to you. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ And from our progeny as well, people that will be submissive to you. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا And show us our ways of pilgrimage. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا And accept our repentance. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, surely you are the most relenting and the very merciful. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ O oh, our Lord, raise from amongst them a messenger who would be from them. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكْ Who should recite to them your ayat, your verses. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And would teach them the book وَالْحِكْمَةِ And teach them the wisdom. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And who would purify them. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Surely you are almighty, all wise. This is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. The first part of the dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first thing he told us, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ Remember when Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam were raising the foundation of the Kaaba. Look at the structure of the ayah when Allah says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ When father and son are working, who would be doing the hard work? We can understand the son is doing the hard work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he mentions the construction of the Kaaba in Quran, he mentions both of them, Sayyidina Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. But this ayah is so clearly telling us the main person is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Even if Ismail alayhi salam is doing the harder work, but the one who is really doing the work is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because father is the main one. And everything he is doing is being done because of his father. 
Ismail is accepted for that effort because of his father Ibrahim So it's not upon, according to who is doing more work, it's according to who is the most important person. With Yarfa'u Ibrahim. And then you look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember when Ibrahim was raising the structure of the Kaaba, what Ismail? And Ismail was doing it too. It doesn't say, with Yarfa'u Ibrahim wa Ismail al Qawaidu al Bayt. No, Ibrahim was doing it, and Ismail was doing it too. Telling us the main person was Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ismail alayhi salam was the helper. And they both were making the dua. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Some of the Mufassireen have explained this in this way, that people who work in construction, they're used to either singing something or listening to something. In old days, they always used to sing because there is no one that will keep on playing music for them. But now they turn on the radio or something and they keep on... You see it always, construction places you hear a lot of music. And at the same time, they keep on singing themselves also. You see them whistling, talking, sometimes... And it happened to me, I used to, some of the people working in construction, you go in there, the person is talking loud. And you enter there, you think there are two, three people in there and find out he's by himself. He's talking to himself. He's trying to put a nail and the nail fell. He's up on the ladder. He'll keep on shouting and cursing. You think he's cursing on someone, but no, he's cursing on himself. So, this is how normally people, they're of the habit of keep on saying something or listening to something. Ibrahim and Ismail as they are building the Kaaba. See, everyone uses his habits. At the time of difficulty, you use your habits. Ibrahim and Ismail السلام, are in the habit of always praying to Allah and making dua to Allah. And therefore, at this time, when their hands are busy in the construction, their tongue is busy in dua. That's one thing that we learn. That when we are doing any physical activity, and a lot of us in this part of the world, we try, we sometimes we drive long distances, and the person doesn't know what to do. And nowadays, People would just listen to some nasheed. They would take nasheed and nasheed with them. And they say, you know, this is Islamic uh, or songs maybe or whatever you want to call them. You know, Islamic. 90% of the people don't even understand what they're hearing. Even those who understand the language of that nasheed, they don't care of what the nasheed says. It's only enjoyment. In simple words, wastage of time. If you are tired, you listen to it for 10 minutes, have little enjoyment. But to listen to it throughout your journey of 6 hours, what were you doing? I was listening to Nasheed 6 hours. SubhanAllah, what did you get out of it? If that time would have been spent in the dhikr of Allah and the tilawa of Quran al kareem imagine how much Quran and how much adhkar we would have recited. And this is the habit that we need to develop. I think I shared this with you before also. I had a colleague in, when we were studying. Once he was coming back, he went home from the school. When he was coming back, he missed his bus. And he had to wait long for the second bus. He says, just on the station I recited 15 juz. Because sitting doing nothing. So he recited, recited the Quran, he finished 15 juz. So, this is the habit that we need to develop. Dhikr of Allah, tilaw of Quran al-Kareem. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam doing physical activity. So at the same time they're making dua. But what is the dua that they're making? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ O our Lord, accept this from us. They're making dua to Allah to accept their effort. Remember the one who's building is Khalilullah. And he's building Kaabatullah and Baytullah, the house of Allah. And he's doing it by Amrullah, by the order of Allah. And yet, he's afraid, what if it is rejected? What if Allah will not accept my effort? For us, we perform few rakah salah and we think, he has to accept it, you know, I did it. 
Why would he wouldn't accept it? Oh, I gave a big charity today. He has to accept it. Subhanallah. This is where we need to see the difference and this is the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. That Khalilullah is afraid that when he's building the house by the order of Allah, still if there is no ikhlas or something may be missing and my effort will be rejected. Therefore, him and Ibrahim Ismail alayhi salam, both of them are continuously making this dua while constructing the Kaaba. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'ul alim. Ya Allah, accept this effort from us because you are the hearer and you are the knower. You hear what we are saying. Ya Allah, you know what our intention is. You know what we are doing it for. We are doing it for your sake. Ya Allah, accept it from us. And therefore, it's important with every ibadah, with every ibadah, there should be dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad-du'a umukhu al-ibadah. Dua is the brain of the ibadah. Ibadah, there are so many shortcomings. Make dua, Ya Allah, I know I brought this with a lot of shortcomings. But Ya Allah, I accept my effort. As one of our scholars, he, he was talking to me personally in his old age, in the last days of his life. I visited him. So, he started weeping. And he said to me, he said, I'm really scared of my a'mal. But I'm really hopeful of Allah's rahmah. Then he said, we see in this dunya, Sometimes people present, uh, present uh, when they bring some gifts, they would present some flowers. And those flowers are made out of plastic or out of uh, fake, fake flowers, out of paper. Sometimes children will just make up something small flower and present it to the parents. Dad, I made this for you, ma'am. I made this flower for you. And we know this is not a real flower. It's not a flower. It doesn't have no fragrance, no smell, doesn't have even have anything that would really you would take for and enjoy of the original flower. But you would appreciate it. And if it is from a children, you say, you know, mashallah, you made it so nice. How did you design it? How did you make it? I didn't know you could make something like this and you appreciate it. He said, this is what our situation is with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we keep on doing our ibadat. But our salah is fake salah. Our all of our ibadat are just fake, are just a design. And we are trying to draw some lines and some designs that will look like the lines that Prophet ﷺ had drawn in his life. So we just try to make something similar to that. And inshallah, Allah will appreciate that from us because we were trying to do it as much as we could. And we did our best to try to do it for his sake. So therefore, we should try our best to keep on doing these things for his sake and then make dua. This is why dua is important. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Ya Allah, accept this from me. I did my best. I couldn't do it any better. Ya Allah, accept this effort from me. Inna ka anta sami'ul alim. Rabbana waj'alna muslimayni lak. Ya Allah, make both of us submissive to you. This is Islam. Islam means submission. So Ya Allah, make us always be submissive to you. And this is to make us understand that Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam are also making this dua to always all stay in that path of being submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never turn away from the order of Allah. Always submit. Always submit. Allah said it, that said, I accept it. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ And from our progeny as well, make some people who will be submissive to you. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا And show us the ways of our pilgrimage. And manasik could refer to all the ways of hajj. And in addition to that, all the other ways of ibadah, of how to do the ibadah in Makkah Mukarramah. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا And accept our repentance. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Because you are the most relenting. You are the one who accept the tawbah and the forgiveness of your servants. Uh, and Ar-Rahim, you are the most merciful. Rabbana wab'ath fihim. Next dua is when Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam is asking Allah to send a messenger for the people of Makkah Mukarramah. To send a messenger over there. Since this dua has some details to it, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, as he asked for Allah to send a messenger, he asked. Allah to send messenger with certain responsibilities. 
He also specified the responsibilities of that Messenger of Allah. So it's a very, very important dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, where we have to see how was it accepted, what was the application of the dua, how about the responsibilities that he had mentioned, how they were fulfilled, and who was the answer of that dua when Allah answered his dua. How Allah answered his dua, inshallah, we'll go into that detail in our next session. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li sa'ir al-muslimina wa al-muslimat, wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alam. Mawla ya salli wa sallim